Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny. Welcome if you are new or welcome back if you are a subscriber. Today we are going to be doing a really fun video. So considering that a lot of us are going to be either working from home, working less, or studying from home and all of that during this whole pandemic thing, I wanted to give you guys some of my most used productivity hacks. Basically, um, our program is cutting back on how many people are in the hospital at any given time. Um, so at this point, we'll be working on 24 hour calls, then we have a day off and then some days we'll be in clinic. We'll be alternating where we are working. Um, the rest of the days we might be working from home whether calling patients back for results or just studying and catching up on the latest data. Um, my husband is also working from home. Just wanted to give you guys some of the tips that I use, have been using for a long time and I will be using to stay focused, be productive, and get on with my day and get all of the things that I want to do done. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. and most important thing is create a to-do list. Take a piece of paper, a notebook, grab a pen, jot down all of the ideas of everything that you possibly could or would want to do during the time that you are going to be home. Basically, I grabbed a little notebook and I just began writing down things that I wanted to do during the time that I was going to be home and setting myself up for success as well as things that I have deadlines for or things that I just want to get done, just get it over with. So a to-do list is, a, is first and foremost the most important thing that you need to do in order to be productive. The second thing is you need to have a reward system. This is something that I used when I was studying for the USMLE Step 1, which if you know anything about medicine you know that it is the most dreaded exam of our existence. So for step one basically I made an eight-week calendar and I had the topics that I was gonna study each day and there was 18 hours of studying per day that included an hour break for lunch, a half an hour break for breakfast in the morning, then um, a half an hour break for dinner. The thing is when you're studying or you're holed up or you're doing something for a prolonged period of time, very easy to get tired, frustrated, disappointed, um, and start getting all of these negative thoughts and energies into whatever it is you're doing. Creating a reward system allows you to get motivated and have something to look forward to. This kind of reminds me of something I was reading about. It's called the Pomodoro Technique, in which you take 25 minute blocks and then you have a five minute break. Then after four sessions, then you take a 15 to 25 minute break. What I do is I write down two, three things that I wanna do. And then when I get them done, I get a break or I get to eat or I go get a snack, or I um, play with my pets, or go for a walk. Something that I look forward to, something different than what I'm doing at the present time. For me, usually I take maybe an hour to two hour blocks and I write down all the things that I wanna do in that time period. And as soon as those two hours are done, I get a reward. I can watch a YouTube video, I can do whatever I want for X amount of time, whatever time you decide. I usually choose maybe 30 minute break. That gives me enough time to kind of like revamp my energy and get back into focus. The third thing that I do is that I have to minimize my distractions. I have to minimize the distractions on my phone, on my computer, around me, and all of that. When I was studying for USMLE Step 1, one of the things that I did is I downloaded blocking apps for my phone and for my laptop. During this time, I basically downloaded um, apps like Focus Keeper and Self Control. Focus Keeper use, utilizes the Pomodoro technique on your phone, and Self Control is for your MacBook and it allows you to blacklist certain sites for X amount of time. So I would input the amount of time that I wanted every website except the websites that I was using for studying and then it would block everything except those websites for that amount of time. Like I told you I usually do one to two hour blocks so I would do two hour blocks and then in those two hours I could only look at websites that were related to what I was studying. Same for my phone. I would start the app on my phone, block it and it wouldn't allow me to do anything on my phone except receive calls. So that way no Instagram, no Facebook, no YouTube, no nothing to distract you from what 
whatever it is that you need to get done. Then going back um, to the first point, the first two points really is to plan your day. So what I typically do, like I said, is I have a to-do list where I write down all of the ideas of the things that I want to do and want to get done. I have a planner um, or like an organizer of to-dos and then I organize it by the day. So then each day I have exactly which of those tasks in my to-do list I'm going to do and I can um, block out time to do that. Time blocking is a good technique that a lot of people use when they're planning their day and it can work for you. It has worked for me, but not as efficiently as just having little goals and just working towards a big goal, finishing like a big chapter or something like that. The next point goes back to the to-do list and the reward system, um, and it is to schedule your breaks. So know exactly when you plan to take your breaks so that, again, it's kind of like the reward system. You have something to look forward to. It's not gonna feel like you're on this eternal roller coaster and your work is never going to end you're never gonna get a break. So if you schedule your breaks every four hours, let's say, then you know that if it's 10 a.m. and your break is at 12, then you know that two more hours to go before you can take your break. It kind of gives you that motivation to push through that hump and get your work done. The other thing is you need to learn how to say no. During these times, it might be a little bit easier because we all should be practicing social distancing and isolation and staying home to keep um, those around us safe. But if in any other situation, people can be inviting you to hang out or shopping, or you might be tempted to go X, Y, or Z location, and it might be tempting to stop what you're doing and go do that, that seems a lot more fun or entertaining. And saying no is really gonna help you be productive and finish what you need to do. So you set your goals for the day, you have your to-do list, and you need to get through that. You need to finish as much of that to-do list as you possibly can, before you can go do something else. This is all gonna come down to setting realistic expectations when you create your to-do list. So you, you know that you are a slow reader, you can't pretend to read 500 pages in one day. Or like if you know that it takes X amount of time to do a certain activity, then you know that you can't schedule five of those if it takes you two hours to do each and every one of them. So you need to be smart about your time management and you need to learn to say no. No, I can't go out now. Maybe we can go later. When I'm done with this, we can go out and just learn to stand up for yourself and stand up for your productivity goals. The other thing that I recommend is don't jump from one task to another until you are done. This is easier said than done sometimes, but for example, when I was studying for step, it was very tempting to want to change the topic that I was studying to something more interesting, but I needed to get through that topic that day because that's what I had in my calendar. And I had a reason for doing that because I was combining questions with reading and pathology and different resources um, about the same topic. So I needed to all of that be done together at the same time. So I couldn't switch from, let's say, cardiology to endocrinology just because it was more interesting. No, I needed to finish the cardiology chapter before I could move on to another chapter. If you guys are interested in some USMLE Step 1 studying resources, I can link in the description down below a blog post that I wrote on how I created my USMLE Step 1 study schedule. It's an eight-week schedule. Uh, there's a link where you can um, sign up for my newsletter and you can receive access to my actual calendar on Google Drive. So if you are interested in that, click the description box down below. Another thing that really helps is to organize the area that you will be working or studying in and making sure that it's a space where you feel comfortable, you feel inspired and motivated. If you're in a room that's depressing or that it doesn't motivate you, you're gonna be less likely to do the things that you want to do. So setting up your area and making sure that it's an area that motivates you is gonna be really helpful in helping to keep you focused. So the other good thing um, that I recommend is taking a moment for meditation, mindfulness, just take a moment to take a deep breath and relax. It can be very overwhelming to be stuck in a room and four walls for a long period of time. And sometimes you just need to take a breather. Sometimes you need feel very overwhelmed and you need to take it in the middle of your session and that's okay. Just pause what you're doing, close your eyes and take slow deep breaths and just 
let all of that stress go let all of that energy come from up here to down here headspace has some really good resources for meditation and mindfulness and you can do this in spans of one two three four five minutes however long you want so if you want to take a five minute break where you want to do some meditation you can have the app a lot of them are free so that you can access them without having to pay for their pro account or plus account and you can have access to their meditations and this can be really useful to help you know, lower stress levels and keep you focused on what your end goal is. The last thing that I have is playing some music. So find out which kind of music motivates you and helps you focus and use that music in the background at a like low volume to kind of keep your mind going. That way you can have something else to kind of keep you focused and not feel like you're in this quiet zone of loneliness. I don't know what I was trying to say, but basically summarizing everything, the top three points, the most important things about this whole video is the things that work for me and they might work for you is have a to-do list, plan your day, and have a reward system with scheduled breaks. Those three, three things are gonna be very helpful and set you up for success if you are trying to get a lot done. If you are trying to be productive and take advantage of your time to be as efficient as you can be. That is it for this video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. I would really appreciate it. It would help me know that you enjoy these kinds of videos. Please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified of when I upload new videos. And don't forget to follow me on social media like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook to know what I am up to at the majority of the time. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.